Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Carsten Alve. I have the pleasure and privilege to introduce the materials science programs in the in the master level we have here to Darmstadt. Um, here you find my address. If there's questions later, you will see also contact addresses of the people in charge. Okay, let me start with briefly introducing what our department is doing, what our mission is, and uh, what you can expect if you would start a master program here at TU Darmstadt. So first of all, we are a department of materials and geosciences. And um, I, I find this picture, which I took last year in summer in Spain, quite uh, um, illustrative for what we are doing. So what you see is a picturesque nice landscape, but um, essentially it's an, a huge environmental damage uh, from from ancient times, it's it's a Roman gold mine in in northern Spain. So the um, the Romans were uh, it was the biggest at that time. So they were exploiting that area. Uh, had twenty thousand slaves in charge who were mining gold, and they did it by drilling uh, tunnels into the area and then using water. And essentially, uh, then the area collapsed, and that is what left over. So and it's it's kind of uh, illustrative because it, it's telling us uh, for hundreds, even thousands of years, uh, we are we are trying to make use of the resources of our uh, wonderful world, uh, make materials we want to use for whatever purpose. But uh, even at that time, we were not very thoughtful about what what is left after, and and it's essentially kind of the motivation for what we're doing here in in this department. Um, First of all, we are asking what resources do we have and what is abundant resources, what is critical resources, and secondly, what materials can we make out of the resources that we can uh, exploit in an environmentally friendly and sustainable manner. Um, and all of that has a clear focus on, on materials for energy application, that means energy con conversion, energy storage. So this is uh, where we are after. And in the materials sector, our research interests, and I'm showing that at the beginning because it has an impact on what we are doing in teaching and gives you a flavor what you can expect in the, in the um, educational program. So we have a strong interest in functional ceramics and here you read on the front page of an MRS journal, uh, which was authored here uh, by our department. Uh, we have an interest in environmentally environmentally friendly materials, like for instance, lead-free piezo ceramics. So uh, ban the lead out of piezo ceramics has been a topic for years. And this is where we started the entire area of substitution of critical elements, which is now also a topic in the context of permanent magnets. So for an electrical engine, you wanna get rid of the, or reduce the amount of rare earth metals you have in there. And uh, so we are after materials that we can use as the um, magnet for rotor uh, in an electric engine, but also for magnetocaloric cooling, as you see here, build, building fridges for mag magnetic materials. Uh, so to reduce energy consumption we have for cooling, which is significant. If you uh, take the amount of electrical energy we have on the world, 50% is uh, used for heating and cooling. And all of that is related also to the question, how can we store energy? Um, could we, for instance, use the energy of, of the sun that we get for free and directly convert it into um, an er energy storage concept, namely producing hydrogen from water. And is it possible to do it in an integrated way by combining here um, tandem solar cell, which is good to use the entire spectrum of visible light with a catalysis so that we can do electrocatalysis driven by solar light. Um, so if you now take our research areas, um, essentially there's two pillars here in Darmstadt, it's materials for electronics and electrochemistry. And the other is the class of magnetic materials that we are after. The combination between both or the binding element is that we are trying to develop materials um, where we, we substitute critical elements and we also care about circularity, reuse of the material recycling is a big issue. And all of that is on the basis of what we call a digital materials design. So data-driven, but uh, for more simulation-driven materials design. So this is our uh, research building, if you like. And I'm starting with that because it's kind of defining the 
the topics we are specializing on in our teaching program. Okay, um, the people who do the teaching, I, I've put here on that slide, um, and I categorize them in terms of what is their field of interest. So you see there's a number of people working on electronic materials, thin films, and uh, all, all kinds of variations ranging from organic electronics uh, up to superconductors, um, conductive oxides, and so on. Um, then we have a strong group in working on functional ceramics, especially synthesis and properties of ceramics. We have these guys here focusing on metallic materials. And in order to understand what we are doing, we have a strong modeling group here, uh, four faculty members uh, exclusively doing computer simulation modeling and theory and a strong branch, which is all kinds of characterization methods, including electron microscopy, X-ray diffraction, surface sensitive techniques. So that means uh, we have here competences in all areas that you need to design and improve or invent novel materials. That requires also state-of-the-art equipment and uh, students who enter our department in one of the programs that I will mention later, um, will definitely be exposed to a lot of UHV techniques. So this is a machine where we can uh, deposit thin films, do X XPS electron spectroscopy at the same time, surface sensitive analysis techniques, everything in ultra high vacuum without breaking the vacuum. And we have several machines of that type. This one is for uh, building thin film batteries. We have others for solar cells. Um, thin film oxides and so on and so forth. And as I mentioned, state-of-the-art characterization methods, electron microscopy, scanning electron microscopy. And um, as I said, in order to make the computational guys happy, we also have a large supercomputer facility here on campus. Uh, that means we are talking about a um, university which is well-equipped and certainly one of the leading places in material science in Europe. So how do we train our students? Um, typically students enter the bachelor program, which at the moment is in German. We certainly also accept international students, but that requires the proof that you know German. In all our study programs, there is no tuition. Here in this session, um, we are looking at the material science program where Essentially, all courses are taught in English, which is important. And again, no tuition. Um, and the typical thing is a two years program. Six months of the two years are an in independent research work, which is called master thesis. And from there, then uh, many of our students move on in uh, the doctoral phase, which is in the German system, an independent phase. So this is here in a different color. Uh, so typically students finish with their master and then enter the doctoral study phase. And what is also different to international schools like in the US or Australia, um, that um, all PhD students or doctoral students are funded. And so you approach your advisor or a possible advisor, ask for a job, and this is how you enter the third phase here. Um, so today we are talking mostly about my yellow box, uh, the materials master programs. Um, where we have a lot of inter international admissions. Um, certainly, as an international student, you can also directly apply uh, to become a doctoral student or enter the bachelor program, the first only if you know German. Okay, and which is sometimes also interesting, there is also an option after you entered our master program to do a fast track into the PhD program, which essentially means you're waived to do the master thesis so you can directly start your research phase uh, as a PhD student, which is reserved for the best of the best students. Okay, so this is a structure of how study is organized in, in, in Germany. And uh, so is it among the various places, if you're asking, okay, what is the top places to study materials in Germany? Uh, where is Darmstadt? Here you see one of the uh, nationwide rankings and you see a number of other famous and uh, prestigious places like KAT, RBTH, Aachen, and so on and so forth. Here you see the number of students. Uh, so in, in total, we have currently about 500 students in our various programs. Uh, you see Aachen is slightly bigger. And, and if you now 
integrate here the number of green points, you see that the downshot program is highly ranked in various criteria. So I translate that study organization support at the beginning and finishing in due time and uh, the general study situation. All of that is evaluated. So this is ranked by students. And so uh, I can proudly say we are definitely one of the uh, what the highest ranked program here in, in Germany um, that is kind of certified by others. So you don't take any risk if you join us. Um, and that you also see in the sorry in the numbers here I just plotted over the 10 years where we have the master program, the number of master students here in our department. And uh, this winter semester, we have 300 students enrolled in, in the master program. And you see uh, the continuous growing slope of this curve is possibly also an indication um, for the quality and uh, the uh, interesting offer we have to make here in, in our master studies. Okay. So this is the background, uh, how we are now. Let me get a little bit more specific and tell you what, what you can expect in, in terms of uh, um, how is our curriculum organized? What is the key elements that you have to go through after you applied and are accepted? Um, so we care a lot about practical skills. Um, so in the first year, you already uh, have to spend time in research labs. So there is uh, small groups working on specific problems. Um, then we care about understanding what you're doing. So there is compulsory courses either on quantum mechanics or micromechanics. And in the second half of the first year, there's a class theoretical methods where you are learning uh, about numerical schemes, theories, how to describe the model materials, because in order to make materials better, we have to understand what we are doing. The other compulsory elements, and sorry, this is a mistake here. I thought I fixed that. Um, let me fix it right away. Does it work? No, it's too risky. So this class is called functional materials. Um, then we have surface and interfaces. And in the second part of the first semester, we have advanced characterization methods. All of that is compulsory courses every student has to take. And the workload per semester is 30 credits. Um, I call them European credit transfer system. So that's the, our credit point system. And you see with the compulsory courses in the first semester, it's 21 credits and the second semester is down to 16 credits. So that means you can fill the remaining credits in order to get 30 credits per semester with a large number of electives. Uh, I will get back to that point later to see what options you have, but so you can essentially design your curriculum at will. If you have an interest in uh, metals, metallurgy, you take other courses, or as if you want to be a simulation guy later, or just if you're interested in ceramics, you combine the bouquet of elective courses as you like. Then in the second year, um, okay, uh, also to mention, there is also a number of courses you have to take outside of the material science curriculum. Um, so that could be project management skills, language, business administration, things like that, which is offered here at the university. So that's in total nine credit points. And then in the last year, you spend half of the uh, first third semester with what is called uh, advanced research lab. So you uh, work in a, one of our research group already on a topic, you write a report, you do your first small uh, research project, which already has a significant workload of half a semester and is kind of a warm up then for the master thesis, which is half a year, the second half of the second year. And uh, since this is not 15, uh, 30 credit points here, you spend again uh, half of your time in the area of electives and how you collect the necessary credits you need here um, over the first one and a half years um, that's on you. Some students do a lot of electives in the very beginning, some uh, split them equally. So this is our study program. And the take home message is um, certainly we have clear focus on uh, understanding things. So bottom up design of materials, this is why the theory and modeling plays play a major role. And uh, 
on advanced uh, characterization methods so that we, we learn how to really see what we do when we design uh, materials and, and look at the structure and the functions. Okay, elective courses. Here is uh, just a copy of some. And you see, uh, I cut everything starting uh, with an initial, uh, which comes later than T in the alphabet. Um, but it gives you, if you can read it, it gives you an impression of, of the variety of, of things we're doing solar cells, nanotubes, high pressure synthesis, uh, interface, wetting and friction behavior, mathematical methods, micromechanics and nanostructured materials, steels, phase transitions, polymers, and the list is growing um, that you also can find when you go on the university website and, and check the course program of the material science department, you see all courses that are actually offered. Here's a few that I highlight in bold, uh, if you couldn't read the small print. Um, that gives you an idea how far it goes. And again, you're individually deciding which combination you want to do. There is in the beginning uh, um, a meeting with a professor who is consulting every individual student. And so we have a discussion what is a sensible combination of courses so that at the end you have a profile that you can offer when you go the next step in your career. Okay, so this is essentially what we offer. And what I will show you now is a number of variations of this course program, which we offer in an international context. This is all called double degree programs. So if you enter these programs, um, you receive a university diploma from the partner institutions. And um, the first I wanna introduce is here, a double degree program between TU Darmstadt and Tongji University in China, Shanghai. This is one of the programs where you also apply for uh, when directly to TU Darmstadt. Um, the others that are coming have different channels to apply for. So this is one where you also send your application material to us. And the idea is, as I said, you get diploma certificates from both partner institutions and um, what is different in the course program. And, and here, again, I, I show you the overview of the courses, which essentially is, is telling you how the program is organized. So the first semester green means you're in Darmstadt. You're spending in Darmstadt. It's almost identical um, to, the, um, to the compulsory program of the regular master. It just has more electives. So in this first semester, you have to collect a few more credits uh, than a student being in the um, standard master program. Then you move for one year to Tongji. Um, there's a lot of uh, interdisciplinary seminar work and uh, the main part is here. The elective courses where you have to choose three out of eight and you learn about your host country. So there is overview of China, general Chinese, you learn the language. And in the second half of your China year, you would uh, do something which is equivalent of to our advanced research lab. So start working in a, in a laboratory of our partner institution. Um, you can uh, do full-time specialized field practice, which is essentially an internship and you start to work towards your thesis. Um, there's a midterm exam. So um, it will be tested what you know by that time. And if you pass that, then you come back and uh, do a master thesis. In principle, you could also continue in Tongji. The, the important thing is that there is a supervision by a professor in uh, China and in, in, in Germany who both agree on a topic and on, on the supervision. So this is program one. And uh, now don't be confused because I will tell you about a number of other programs um, with different partners and so on, but they all build on the same structure. So the table you're looking at here, you will see now in various modified versions um, just to keep track of what I'm talking about. Now we go to a smaller scale um, and this is programs we have together with European partners. The idea is the same. Um, you get a diploma certificate from TU Darmstadt and from one of uh, the partner institutions which vary depending on the program. What is different is that for these programs you don't apply through TU Darmstadt but they all have 
an independent application system. Um, how to get there, you find on our webpage, and, and they also have different sponsors, um, which is also of interest to uh, a number of students because there's the option uh, not only to pay uh, fees for the program, but also to collect um, scholarships. Um, so that, that makes these programs attractive. And let me go through the uh, different acronyms and tell you what they are about. Um, the first is AMIS, it stands for Advanced Materials for Innovation and Sustainability. So here clear focus is on, on development of sustainable materials, which means uh, avoiding toxic or critical materials. I have given the example of lead in the very beginning. Th think about uh, the processing chain. Um, how is the materials processing at the end affecting the recyclability of the material? And um, so can we design materials so that they are ready for a circular economy? So that's the key questions uh, we are addressing here in this AMIS and, and that we do together with partners. Before I show you uh, who they are, um, there is fees for this program. Um, and here you see, depending on where you're from, how much it is. So the farther you're away from Germany, the more expensive it becomes. Um, but the good news is um, um, for a good number of students, there's also grants. Um, so that is called Added Value Student Activities Grant. And so they are, if you sum that up, uh, the grant is higher than the tuition fee. Um, so there is uh, also the possibility to get funding um, if you belong to the group of excellent students. Okay, how is that organized? There is different ways. So in the AMIS program, you can start at TU Darmstadt. And here you see in, in black the courses which are part of our standard program. Again, functional materials, advanced characterization methods, services, interfaces, and so on. But uh, what is shown in green and uh, italic is additional courses which are specific to this project uh, program because um, the materials innovation, the, the question of how to at the end commercialize uh, things, uh, this is also all skills that we are training here. So there is a course on entrepreneurship, uh, career coaching, and, and the so-called innovation projects together with the venture evaluation. They essentially cover that part. Um, and so that makes it specific and different to our standard program. So the partners we have is Aalto University in Finland, Liège in Belgium, Bordeaux in France, and Grenoble also in France. I cut Darmstadt because this is where you spend the first year, and that means the second year you have to go into one of these partner institutions. And depending on where you go, your second diploma then will, if you end up in Liège, will be in Belgium one, or if you end up in Alto, will be a Finnish one. Um, that program exists also in the reciprocal uh, direction. That means you can start also at Alto or Grenoble and then come to Darmstadt in your second year. And here you would essentially have a, a small number of compulsory courses, would uh, collect a number of credits uh, in the elective courses that I mentioned before. Again, um, you would need to do this innovation project and the venture evaluation course, and then enter the master thesis. So this would be essentially the format for the second year. And similarly, all other European programs we have are organized. Um, the FAME program is one of the oldest. Now it's called FAME Plus, stands for Functionalized Advanced Materials and Engineering. Uh, you see there is some overlap of the partners. Uh, now here in Belgium, we also have Louvain. Bordeaux is again on board. Uh, here's a Portuguese partner, University of Aveiro. Uh, Grenoble we had at another German university, University of Augsburg. Um, you see the Finns are missing here, so um, Darmstadt is always part of the game, uh, just the partners is, is changing. And uh, also this program has tuition fees, they're similar to what I just described for AMIS, but uh, the important thing is um, there is grants or scholarships and they are significant uh, because they almost cover your living expenses for the, for the two years. You have to pay the tuition from that. Um, but you see here, uh, this is uh, substantial support. 
However, this is not for everyone. I mean, if uh, this goes to the best of the best and it's a competitive uh, selection process, um, there is a smaller scale grant which comes from another source um, which can be distributed. It's about uh, 300 uh, euro per month, depending on where you're from. Um, and we also pay tuition, but that only applies for uh, students who come from a European partner. Okay, fame, what is the coursework? Again, you see the elements in black of our standard program, micromechanics, advanced characterization theory uh, is all in there. The advanced research lab already happens in the first year, it's a little bit reduced, and then we have fame E projects, E stands for electronics, so where you essentially work together with partners at other uh, places, um, so this is, kind of bridging the program over the different sites. And uh, the computational material science is also an element which is compulsory here in the fame. And then in the second year, as I show here, you go to one of the partners. If you're from Germany, you're not allowed to go from Augsburg because it would be too boring uh, from one German to another German university. Um, but other than that, you can choose all, all partners here. FAME, again, also exists in the version second year only, um, where you essentially do the research lab, uh, have the micromechanics, spend most of your time in elective courses, and then do the master thesis. So this is when you come from outside and spend your second year in Darmstadt. Okay, and along these lines, also the third program I want to introduce today is, is designed. Here you see Again, uh, the partners are a little bit different. Now we have uh, uh, in Spain, Madrid, Liège is again part of the game, Bordeaux, but now a different Portuguese partner and uh, university in Mies College, uh, which is in Hungary. And um, this program uh, can start at one of these places here. Typically, the students coming to Darmstadt start in Bordeaux and then spend their second year uh, in Darmstadt. Um, so it's open again for people with a bachelor in chemistry, physical chemistry materials, or even in environmental engineering. And the focus here, as you see from the uh, picture, is on recycling. So the recycling aspect is the key aspect here in that program. Um, there is again uh, program fees you have to pay, but um, also in this program you can apply for scholarships which is a little less than in fame, um, but still, still attractive. And um, so that can cover at least a larger part of the expenses you would have while staying in Europe. Okay, again, course list. This is, for instance, a study program the students take in the first year in Bordeaux. Um, and then they come to Darmstadt, they do, again, the advanced research lab, and then they have to take two compulsory courses, service interfaces, function materials. There's a specific class for this recycle program called life cycle assessment of products and systems. And then there is still time for electives. And again, the last semester is the master thesis. Okay, that was essentially the overview of programs. And um, my last slide is this year. Um, because it's kind of summarizing what we're trying to do and what independent of which, which specific program you're interested in at the end of the day is, is uh, uh, our vision, how we want to shape the world, namely uh, changing from a world where we really exploit our resources uh, without much thinking. And here you see <laughs> a few examples of what we could do better into one very really uh, make material science uh, the, the key um, measure to, to convert our world into one where we uh, consciously and uh, in an economic and sustainable way uh, make use of our resources and make sure that uh, human uh, beings can populate this globe uh, also in 100, 200, 300 years. I mean, this is the overall goal and uh, advanced materials is, is one of the keys to that. With that, I'm at the end. Um, here you find all relevant information. We have a web page. Um, if you 
choose study and then before study and then go on master, you find all information I just have summarized here on my slides. And here's contact names of the guys who are also here today. Uh, Bischler, uh, general contact for, for master program and the European programs are expert and responsibility of imports. With that, I thank for your attention. I'm at the end and we can enter the discussion.